Kameraden, something a little bit special for you today. Uh, I have a wonderful relic of World War II, a precious relic of World War II, a sad relic of World War II. Um, this is a Hitler Youth dagger. Now, it's actually wrapped in this quite extraordinary table napkin of sorts, emblazoned with um, hand embroidered swastikas. And it looks as though it also has some um, potentially blood markings on it, but I'm not sure if that's the case. Um, this Hitler Youth dagger. Well, the Hitler Youth dagger comes, of course, from the militarized children's corps of the National Socialists. Uh, the Hitler Youth started as one of the earliest sub branches formed in 1922 and in the early days of the Hitler Youth they were involved in uh, street fighting with other uh, youth organizations such as uh, the Communist Youth, uh, Red Front Youth, things like that and they would have horrible fights um, even as young children as early as in the uh, 1920s and of course as the organization progressed uh, they had uh, instituted this dagger in 1933. Um, it was a organization um, which mimicked the Boy Scouts in many respects and the Girl Scouts and of course there was a uh, girl division of the Hitler Youth called the Bund der Deutschen Mädels or League of German Girls uh, and uh, they, they were more focused uh, on things like sewing and uh, working within the home and cooking practices and uh, helping the wounded, things of that nature. Whereas the boys uh, uh, were engaged in uh, learning how to use firearms and uh, helping the sick and the elderly and uh, uh, going around the streets, um, putting up propaganda uh, material and of course by 1939 through to 1945 they were heavily engaged in fighting uh, the Allies, the adults, as young children. Um, the 12th SS uh, Panzer Hitler Jugend Division is one of the famed units, uh, an armoured division. Uh, over 20,000 children in this division fought to repel uh, the British and Canadian forces in the D-Day invasion and uh, they caused great casualties to the Allies, um, taking out uh, many tanks and personnel of course at uh, their own peril. The Hitler Youth, although they were children, were very well trained and, and were really indoctrinated to fight as they saw it for the defence of their nation and the defence of their race. Now these uh, daggers are becoming rarer, although of course they, they were produced in the millions. Uh, on the blade it says Blut und Erde, uh, Blood and Honor. Um, now this particular Hitler Youth dagger belonged to Walter Verführt of Goch, the town of Goch in Germany. He was married to his sweetheart Reinhilde, uh, who was also in the Hitler Youth and the uh, BDM. And sadly, uh, and extraordinarily, as many of these stories that linked to relics such as this, Walter um, fought to defend his town, Goch, uh, when the 153rd um, Infantry Brigade entered its town to try and capture it, uh, mostly comprised of Highlanders. Uh, and these Highlanders were fighting children uh, of the Hitler Youth. And uh, Walter and his classmates uh, would um, literally go up against tanks. And I recall um, in, the, in the mornings uh, just before church, uh, Walter would, uh, would go for a walk uh, along the Hasenweg uh, and the river Nias. And he would show me all the places where he and his mates as young children would uh, sit and wait on guard or would eventually then fight uh, terribly. Uh, on one occasion he said that one of the uh, tank mounds that they had created a year earlier, uh, they would have these sticky bombs or these woolen socks laden with some sort of sticky oily substance, laden with some sort of uh, dynamite and, and fuse. 
I'm not sure of the exact details, but but he would say they would they would wait on the bank of this um, anti-tank um, windrow, if you like, and they would listen to the tank as it came up from the other side, and as the tank came up, they would slap on the sticky bomb, roll away just as the tank would. Uh, go go across and roll down before it would explode. I mean the heroism of these children uh, and uh, their level of um, indoctrination. It's a sad, sad story of World War II. This is a portrait of Walter. Uh, this is uh, Walter verführt in his railway uh, uniform taken sometime in the 1980s. Um, and as sad as it is um, that these children were dying for the cause, so to speak, uh, and were clearly misused and abused as children, I asked Walter, I said, Walter, do you think that you were indoctrinated? Would you change anything? And uh, he said to me that he would change uh, nothing. Um, he would have done the same thing Again and again, uh, he said, we fought to the last bullet, to the last blade, and I want you to have this dagger such that uh, we, can, we will not be forgotten, such that we may be memorialized one day. Uh, so here's my tribute to Walter verführt, Ein Hilde verführt, out of Goch, Importantly to all of the children who fought and died for Germany in the most gruesome possible way. And you also have to think of the Allied soldiers who, when um, ordering a barrage of artillery on what they would have thought were evil Nazi men on the banks of the Nias in Goch, and they were fighting against um, the um, the firearms fire coming their way, only then to discover that they had shot young children. Uh, the, the, the trauma of that is also unimaginable on both sides. Sadly, the uh, house in which Walter and Reinhilde had a wonderful life is now a ruin uh, on the Kalkarstraße in Goch, which is sad, but also, also in some ways a befitting monument uh, to the memory of these children who gave literally their lives in the defense of Germany.